Right, I'm sorry I haven't uploaded any videos for a while, but I've been having trouble trying to upload the last video that I made a while ago, and I'm still having trouble doing it, so I've decided to just start making new videos again now anyway, and just see how it goes from there. So we're going to continue from where we left off last time in this series, and we're going to look at some of our arithmetic series this time and I've written down some formulas that we're going to be using and then we've got two problems that we want to solve afterwards but first of all I'm just going to show you a classic problem this problem was to so solve all the the sum of all the numbers from 1 to 100. You can try doing it by yourself without these formulas and just see if you can think how to do it. Gauss did it when he was at school. He was given this problem to add up all numbers from 1 to 100. And this is what he did. Started off by making groups that made a hundred like this and then there was an odd one out which was the 50 you know that would be 50 of these so this is 50 times 50 5050 we got so that that's what happened you might have got the numbers a bit wrong, but it turns out to be 5050, and that's the idea of it there. That's what Gauss did. So now we're going to use these formulas and solve some problems. So the first one is to find the sum of the first 20 terms. And the first term thing, last term is 17. So we're going to use this formula here, the top one. Oh, by the way, I should have told you what these num what these letters and the formulas mean. The n's the number of terms, a is the first term, l's the last term, d's the common difference, and the s is means just means sum. So now we know what the letters mean, we're going to use this top formula to solve this first problem here. So we're told that there's 20 terms. So I place this n, this subscript n with 20 now, and I'm going to um, put that's one half times that, that's, that's 20, because that's how many terms are on n. Inside the brackets, we've got the first term plus the last, so that's going to be 3 plus 17. So then when we multiply all this out, we'll get 1 half times 20 times 20. And that is going to come out to be 200. That's the 20 squared is 400, and then when you half that, you get 4, you get 200. So the sum of these terms is 200, you can add them um, up on a calculator if you like. Notice we didn't even have to find the difference for the series because we used the top formula. But you could also find the difference for this series and use the bottom formula if you wanted to. The way you would find the difference would be to use the bottom formula because we know what the first term is and we know how many terms are in the series so we could use this one. And now on this problem this one's harder. Well now we don't know how many terms there is so we can't use either of these formulas straight away. <coughs> but I'm just going to write down what we do know. We do know that the first term, we know that a is 3. 
L is I'd say last term is 47 because that's where we stopped for that last term. We can find out what the distance is, you just find it out by looking how much we've added in each step. We can see that that's 2, so the difference is 2, and N we don't know. So, now what we're first going to do first of all is we're going to find out what N is because notice we need N for to be able to use either of these two formulas to find the sum. So the first problem is to find n. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use this formula here. Because I know what the nth term is. nth term is 47. But that's just the last term. We know that a is 3. So we can put that in the formula. n we don't know so we'll just leave it as n. And we know that d is 2. So we'll put all the numbers in here now, we're just going to simplify this a bit. So first of all I'm going to remove these brackets, just by multiplying throughout by 2. Then, I'm just going to simplify this and get 2n plus 1 plus 47. And then we'll subtract 1 from both sides, and we'll divide both sides by 2, 23 plus n. So n's 23. <coughs> so now we know what n is. We know that n's 23. So now we'll have the information to be able to use either of the two formulas at the top here. We're going to use the bottom one just because I've had practice using the other one, so we're going to try using the different one now. So we'll write sum of the first 23 terms. It's 23 over 2. Two times three plus 23 minus one times 2. So we've put all the numbers in, now we're just going to simplify this a bit, so let's deal with the brackets first, we've still got with 23 over 2, we've got 6 here, and then we've got plus, let's figure out what this is, that's 23 minus 1, so that's 22, I times that by 2 I get 44. Then in the brackets here I get 50. So we get 23 over 2 times 50. <coughs> and this 23 over 2 can be rewritten as 11 and a half times 50. And we can see that because we know how to change improper fractions to mixed numbers. So now what we can do is we can times, first of all we're going to do 11 times 50. We know what 10 times 50 is, we know that that's 500. So 10 times 50 is 500 and I add on another 50 so I get 550 but then I want to multiply by the half remember the half so we get 575 so some of the first of all these terms, the first 23 terms of this series is 575. So that's how we use both of these formulas to solve these problems. Last of all, how about I use the top formula as well to solve this problem just because we've got all the information here and then I can show you that they both give the same answer. 
Why don't I do that? Okay, so let's see what we get now. Here's three. Here's forty-seven. And you can see you can see what's gonna happen here. When I multiply the twenty-three by the half I get twenty-three over two. And when I add these together I do get me 50 back again, so I can do this as we did before, because this is the same sum we we'll faced with before. So I end up with 11 and a half times 50, which we'll figure out to be 575 by knowing what. 10 times 50 is adding on 50, and then figuring out what half of 50 was and adding that on as well. So, there we go, I've also verified that both of these formulas do in fact give the same answer. So, you can use either of these formulas, but we just need to check which one's more appropriate by the information we're given in the problem.